This video is brought to you in part by Surfshark VPN. Now, normally when you mix up surfing and sharks, it's a pretty bad idea. But ironically enough, it actually might be the safest way to surf the internet. Basically, when you cruise around online without a VPN, you're cruising around naked. All your info is out there for everybody to see, whether you know it or not. But Surfshark's got your back. And if you want to be blocked from annoying ads or hide away for your shameful internet adventures, Surfshark will keep you anonymous, like properly anonymous, not just some incompetent Magneto tab. Those do not work. They streamline the whole process. It's super easy to get started and they keep it at a cheap, convenient price. And they pretty much have all of your devices covered, game consoles included. And it's not just responsible, it's fun. Surfshark basically multiplies your stream library a hundredfold. Just pick a part of the world you'd like to rep and bam, there you go. And that's just a bonus of keeping you safe online. While you limit your data's exposure, you expose yourself to a whole new world of entertainment. Now, if all of that sounds good to you. Click the link in the description below and enter the promo code APOLOGIST for 83% off and four extra months for free. Thank you again for Surfshark for sponsoring this video and let's get on with it. Hello there, I'm Nick, and this is The Game Apologist, where we look for the good in bad games. And if you didn't see part two of this video where I already gave this warning, I'm gonna give it to you again. This is part three of what was once a much larger video. And as such, a lot of this stuff is gonna seem out of context if you're not caught up with that. Got the links for those videos in the description down below, so be sure you get caught up if you're interested in hearing what I have to say about these games. And yes, I am already aware that they just came out with some patches for Sonic color so some of this stuff might seem a little outdated but i will address a little bit of that on the back half of this video so be sure you stick around just again keep that in mind and uh if you make any silly comments about what's been patched out i'm gonna promptly ignore you anyway with that said let's continue our coverage of sonic colors with our final part ultimate <laughs> By now, anyone in the Sonic fanbase has probably heard every opinion under the sun about this game. And every time I've streamed this thing, I always get people asking me if I've run into glitches or if it's worth the asking price. And across four versions of this game, PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox. Wasn't gonna get the Xbox version, but I lost my keychain for the Switch version, and I really wanted to make that keychain joke both before and after a large chunk of patches. I can tell you that I really didn't run into a lot of glitches, but I did run into them all the same. Some of your classics, like the pop-in, or music dropping randomly, or textures loading in whatever they fancy, or Sonic floating into a level, a game crash here and there. All right, this was the part that kept glitching out on me. Let's, let's see if this got fixed. Oh shit, there we go. There you go. That is the shit I signed up for. And um, there, you, there you have it. Yeah, all of this stuff happened, and it was noticeable and distracting, or flat out unplayable. Thankfully, I never ran into the more notorious ones like seizure-inducing glitches, or corrupting save files, or any of those other big bad problems that others have reported. Still, the fact that they are here at all is a massive, massive problem. <laughs> Crisis no. City is fun, not gonna lie. Well, yeah, you guys enjoy what you want. And I've always been the, you could do whatever you want, like, just don't push on me. Is that the bad kind of thing? Because well, I'm not, like... It's a, so... It's not bad. Um, I know that, like, uh, there's a YouTuber that I watch, Philosophy Tube, who considers that uh, your dadism. But, I mean, it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's certainly harmless. What happened to my game? I wish I could say I was remotely surprised at the backlash we've seen from this game, but there's been a lot of arguing since trailer one. Why is everything so dark? Oh, don't worry, they're just showing off earlier builds because you know that makes sense? That's what vertical slices are known to do. Don't worry, assets have leaked online, it's actually beautiful. No wait, no, a new trailer's out, it's garbage. And even when it's actually out, we can't tell what glitches are real or made up through an emulator. And the worst version of the game seemed to swap places every hour but I think it finally settled on the switch, but each of them have their problems. There we go. And yep. <laughs> oh, do you okay. still get the you still get the drop? In every <laughs> single version. We can now confirm Ooh. every single version still has this. Wowie, wow, wow. Just Wow, wow, what was he? 
Wow Wow Lisa. But despite the vitriol inspired by Ultimate, it's still getting great review scores. We seem to be in a Last Jedi situation where critics are just adoring this thing, while a lot of the hardcore Sonic fan base is, quite frankly, livid. Could just never be on the same page, can we, journalists? Ah, shit. I mean, I think, uh... <laughs> you know, I think we cross right past each other like ships in the night, With man. With flip-flops. Yeah, because we're on the opposite side now. <sighs> that side makes no more sense. Oh, we could have no. just met up like two hours no, ago. Not. Sonic fans are known to throw a fit over these reviews, however they go. If you've seen my chum channel pups videos or heard us on Sunset City, you know a lot of these review sites still fall back on the same tired talking points of 3D Sonic. I know a lot of you are sick of reviewers dragging up the corpse of Sonic 06, but I can't help but feel that's somewhat warranted when absolutely everything people were concerned about going wrong went wrong. But ironically, they don't seem to be bringing up 06 in relation to all the glitches that Colors Ultimate seems to have. They just talk about the importance of Colors in relation to when it was released when compared to the rest of the franchise. And I genuinely do not know how some of these larger outlets completely pass them by. Are we just this accustomed to glitchy games at launch? Sonic 06 wasn't broken, it was just ahead of its time. Despite whatever problems you may have with your standard IGN review, a lot of these guys hit the basic points that actually matter for the general consumer. And when it boils right down to it, most people are probably gonna have a good time with Sonic Colors Ultimate. But I'm not your general consumer. I am a hardcore Sonic fan, one who has been around for all 30 years of the Hedgehog's existence. I'm not happy with this game. I have been in a lot of spots while playing this, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, most of that enjoyment was already already present in the original Wii release. Ultimate is a shoddy house built on a solid foundation, and I hate that I'm not even surprised at this point. I'm not even surprised that Sega fell below my already low expectations. What I expected was the bare minimum, up and upscaled, slapped onto a disc and put on sale. Mama Bird Sega is just regurgitating an old meal into the screeching gullets of an impatient fan base of baby birds. And that was kind of the point of this release, wasn't it? A safe, easy product that was well regarded, and it gives the fans something to buy. All they should have done is shine this up for HD, add some simple quality of life improvements found in Generations, and slap Colors and Generations and Unleashed into a boost trilogy. If this was supposed to be an easy release, there were easier ways to go about this. Sonic fans just want their damn games back. That's it. They want to play them and preserve them on new hardware. And if this was just here as a stopgap, then that's all this should have been. Nintendo is already proving problematic with their re-releases, and all Sega is doing with this is just lowering that standard even further, when sadly, I know less effort was put into 3D All-Stars and Skyward Sword. The biggest problem of this game should have been its price point. Right next to those Nintendo games, this thing so desperately tried to emulate. But even then, Sega had to release something worse than what Nintendo has been doing for the past year. Something worse than a $60 price tag. Something worse than artificial scarcity. If your remaster comes out and you cannot definitively call this the best version of the game, if you need digital foundry to compare what's changed in the textures, then you've screwed up pretty royally. Yes, I am going to whine about things you've already heard about. I don't hate the lowered lights in Tropical Resort. I think they look kind of nice. I just don't know why they didn't bother messing with the lights from level to level. Like, make it sometimes look a little bit more like the original version of the game, and sometimes lower the lights a little bit. I don't think that's asking for too much. And it's very jarring when you compare it to the AI upscaled cutscenes, which feature all the original lighting and textures. Good job on that upscaling, by the way. Feels like I'm watching a 3D movie without the glasses. Don't even get me started on that small screen in the options menu. But back to the graphics. I'm sorry, the bloom is too much. Good God, Starlight Carnival. It looks like an insecure teenager's profile picture. And why does Sonic look like a bootleg nightlight? Thanks, Obama. And then there's load times. Clearly another optimization issue on full display. And I'm sure a lot of you notice how long it took for some levels to start, partially thanks to the music. Like I talked about earlier, there was this harmony between the environment and the music, and it felt like they built up through the level's title, Sonic stretching, and when he actually took off. The track synced up so well with the original game that it felt like there were music cues to let the player know when the loading was finished, when Sonic would begin running. And hell, this may be coincidental, but on levels where you're actually playing pretty perfectly, the music flowed along with you. This made you feel like you were part of the band, and the controller was your instrument. With ultimate slower loading times, it makes you feel like you're missing your mark. It feels like a video stream with a visual delay, and everything just kind of feels off as you start the level. The music already ramping up before you've even started running. And of course, let's not forget that embarrassing silence and the hilariously long credits? I've only heard about them, I wouldn't know myself, because my game crashed during the credits. Alright, look at that. Alright, so we do have a positive change. 
Nick can finally say he beat this stupid game thanks to the patch. Music can be hit and miss, and I know a lot of it's subjective, but let's, let's just call it like it is. June rocks the living crap out of some of these remixes. Terminal Velocity feels even more like a proper end game challenge thanks to his music. Asteroid Coaster now feels like it was pulled straight out of Sonic Adventure 2. The Ferris wheel fight is now even more undeservedly epic. But then you also have this EDM shit, which is just obnoxious. Some of it slaps on its own, don't get me wrong, but a lot of it sounds unfinished. Feels like I'm halfway through one of Carpathia's deconstructed Sonic tracks. And if you don't get that reference, go check out their channel. It is so ridiculously satisfying. It'll also make my joke funny with context. And yes, of course, the infamous Planet Wisp track. The thematic turning point in the narrative of Sonic Colors, when you get past all the bright lights and theme park rides and see the sad natural beauty being torn apart. Yeah, all that's replaced with a rave. <laughs> Funnily enough, though, you get the original track if you didn't bother with the pre-order bonus. It's kind of like Sega didn't really think too much about this at all. Kind of feels like Sega was just putting extra crap in here just to convince you to pre-order the game before all these reviews could come out. The remixes are just a confusing mix. Some tracks feel like a genuine improvement, but a lot of it feels unfinished or half-hearted. Change for the sake of being changed, and others completely missing the point of the original tracks. And you say that about everything in this product. Medallions were added to the game, which in turn can be used to unlock some fun little texture swaps for Sonic. Sonic's shoes, gloves, and, uh, the running. And these character emblems that I promise you will forget about. The tail save in concept is a solid idea, but the implementation clearly leaves a lot to be desired. They were so determined to make this a selling point and revolutionize the life system, and it just ended up creating new problems. For example, there was this one time I fell into some green goo because the frenzy sucks, and I died and got sent back to a checkpoint, but another time it activated the tail save. So okay, maybe it's not just for bottomless pits, or maybe the goo is considered a bottomless pit? I genuinely don't know what the parameters are here. Why does he take so long to drop you down? Were they just that proud to have a Tails model in the game? You remember all that speculation we had when we first saw his stupid floating head in a screenshot? Thought there might be a playable Tails. Gosh, how ridiculous we were being. I know a lot of people say that life systems don't matter anymore, but just because it's not as severe with its punishment like it could be back in the NES days, doesn't mean it doesn't have a place. In the original release, the lives would get you back to checkpoints, and if you lost all your lives, you got kicked out of the level. It's simple, it's not too punishing, but it does the job just fine. And every hundred rings will get you an extra life, giving you great incentive to collect rings. But with the tail save, oh, they make you temporarily invincible. Just solving a problem that didn't need to be solved. When did anybody use that invincibility? Why are they so obsessed with making this easy game even easier? And shout out to King K for pointing out that you can actually exploit this thing by grabbing red rings over and over again. And to Chow Mix for pointing out that if you just wanted to restart at a checkpoint in case you missed a red ring, the tail save will occasionally lock you out of that option. These are not things you would probably notice in a single playthrough without attempting to 100% the game. And probably not something you would have noticed if you had to quickly put a review together just to make sure you could get this published the moment an embargo lifts. But this is the kind of stuff that hardcore Sonic fans will notice. So thank you, Jensen, to everybody else who've been analyzing this game for paying attention to the smaller details. And if you haven't seen either of their videos yet, links are in the description. And if you have seen them, go watch them again. If you can play through Sonic Colors twice, you can watch a YouTube video twice. 
twice. But moving on from there, the Ghost Wisp is an embarrassing attempt to add replay value by moving around some red rings. And it's somehow even less engaging than my least favorite Wisp powers from the original. And it does what no Sonic remaster should ever do. It makes the game slower. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not creative. And it only reminds me of how much more fun I had with the Pulsars from Mario Galaxy. And I didn't even find those things super fun to begin with. Let's move on to the Rival Rush mode. Good lord, what a letdown. The premise is fine. It's just a challenging time trial mode. And maybe if I didn't pay attention to the pathetic marketing campaign of this game, I wouldn't have expected so much. But I don't think I was expecting that much to begin with. There's just six courses here. Some aren't even on the main axe. Like why, why, why even bother? See, my thinking was the ranking system in Sonic Colors took me a while to get my head around because it incorporates rings, wisp usage, red ring collection. And when you incorporate all of that, the actual time it took you through the level doesn't matter that much. So I thought at the very least, they would take a page from Crash Bandicoot and offer an extra reward for all the stages by focusing solely on how fast you make your way through it. That makes sense for a character like Sonic. And yes, they kind of do that. It's just for six levels though. Why go to all the trouble of producing a cartoon that features better writing than the original game and teases some really cool ideas that you could incorporate into the game? A Wisp capsule infused Metal Sonic? Are you kidding me? That looks amazing. Also splitting the cartoon in two made even less sense than splitting Sonic three in half. These guys were really that desperate to spread out content for everything in this game, weren't they? Good Lord. How cool would it have been to have a secret Metal Sonic fight or have him incorporate Wisps into the race itself? You already have a final boss with this template, just mix it around a bit. Or you could remix levels themselves, move around set pieces, or make the game a little bit more challenging, make a proper hard mode. The tail save should have been incorporated into a new easy mode, and Metal should have been incorporated into a hard mode, both optional to play. I mean, give Metal Sonic something else to do. Give him a couple of attacks. I mean, how cool would it have been to have every level in the game feel like the Sonic Sonic CD race. Or hey, why not have a split screen or online mode where you play Sonic and another player gets to use metal? Make it a proper rival rush. You already kind of have something going on with this weird multiplayer mode. Why not expand upon it? And Channel Pump pointed this out while we were talking. Metal Sonic and Tails Doll absolutely should have been playable in that mode. Give us something for getting rid of the Miis. And obviously, if nothing else, as everybody else has already pointed out, they should have made Metal Sonic an unlockable after beating all the Rival Rushes. There's just a lot of good ideas here, even if they just took Rival Rush and incorporated it into more levels, that still would have been a step up from what we got here. Some of these ideas might be a bit too much. All of them require some more effort, but this game deserves it. And what's worse? A lot of these ideas are already available in the DS game. Time Trial? Check! Battle Race Mode? Check! Multiplayer? Check, check, check! All available for every act of the game. I mean, sure, you don't get to play with or against Metal Sonic, and that sucks, but this is just so frustrating because Ultimate had every opportunity to learn from the mistakes of the original Wii release and potentially bring in some cooler ideas from the DS game. Instead, we just get all these half-hearted attempts. Rival Rush aside, you could do some bare minimum quality life improvements. Make the shorter acts distinct on the overworld map. Give us some boosts in that awkwardly slow opening to Starlight Carnival Act 1, or that weird backwards movement when you get shot up by that lift. There's also something that's been driving me a little bit crazy when it comes to saving progress and level replays. Sometimes the game would acknowledge I'd pick up new red rings or manage an S rank and it'd all save just fine. But occasionally when I would hop back into the overworld map, it would act like I had done absolutely nothing and I would find my hard earned red rings still grayed out and my letter grade still the same as it ever was, even though I spent all that extra time after class working on that extra credit. So I thought that the game wouldn't save the progress if I restarted a run, even if I hit the goal line. But no, if I did replay from the goal line, all my newly acquired red rings would still be there, safe and sound. But if I had decided at that point that I'm good with what I had and paused the game and exited the level, nothing would be saved. And as it turns out, I needed to either leave the level after that initial successful run at the goal screen, or if I had hit the replay option, I would have to go through the entire level yet again and then get to the goal screen and then exit the stage. It's only there that the game will save your progress. This sounds somewhat nitpicky, I understand. 
but if you are somebody who is clearing up red rings and trying to master the course to the point you get the coveted S rank, you're likely going to be replaying the level quite a few times, and also likely you will accidentally hit the button that instigates a repeat run instead of exiting. That'll just be out of habit from redoing courses over and over again, just to better that score or ring count. Just save my damn progress there at the goal line, regardless of whether or not I replay the level or leave. The only reason I can think of wanting to wipe away any progress is if you lost a bunch of lives. Oh, wait, no, those don't matter anymore. Okay, even if you swapped out lives for tail saves, those are just there to be a buffer anyway. If you lose all of them, you would just be started back at a checkpoint. So even this one very specific example doesn't make any kind of sense. I just, <laughs> we weren't asking for much from this game, just some simple quality of life improvements over the original. I mean, it is cute that they had some extra lines for tails to say if you take advantage of some glitches for speed running, but even that is starting to feel less like an Easter egg and more of an excuse to not put more effort into this thing. It's like they cut open a gaping wound into this game and then try to fix it with some band-aids. But hey, at least these band-aids have fun patterns. That's not to say I don't appreciate some of the things brought to the table by Ultimate. I love it when they re-release a game and try to do something new with it. That takes a lot of time and talent, but I also have to consider all the new issues that were also brought to the table. The obvious development mess swept under the rug, but still present on the game itself, and asking us to clear space to make room for all these abandoned ideas or full-on dev toolkits. When you take all of that into consideration, it's hard for a lot of us to look at these concepts as anything other than half measures, promising us new features that can largely be dismissed while bringing in a slew of issues that were not present in the original release. And I don't want Sega to yet again learn the wrong lessons and abandon good ideas that just need a little more fleshing out. I want to see what Rival Rush and the Tail Save could evolve into. I want to see an Unleashed Ultimate or a Generations Ultimate. Hell, you know what? I would take a Forces Ultimate. I've said it a thousand times on social media. I would gladly take a remake of Sonic 06, but I need that polish. I need that confidence and it's just it's not here. I want them to see these projects through and give them the polish they deserve because Colors Ultimate certainly took a little bit of that luster away. We already have modders, artists, this incredible talented community once again doing their best to bring out the full potential of yet another messy Sonic product. And once again, I'm floored. It's great seeing all this talent and I'm glad Sega isn't trying to shut down this community, but I'm still mad at Sega. But you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna dive into some really out there ideas really big, ridiculous ones. Because Sonic Colors deserved more than this. It deserved a proper remake. Polish up that story a bit. That short cartoon, despite a couple of weird hiccups, was on the right path, and having the voice cast come back with all their experience under their belt would have been awesome. Or bring the DS cutscenes to life, have other Sonic characters pop by for cameos, turn the overworld map into a 3D hub world, and make every level look like the entrance to a ride. If Sonic Team wasn't going to make the game itself, then hand it off to Dimps if they're there's enough people that worked on the original Sonic projects. Give them the big console version. Or failing all of this crazy stuff, maybe stop treating the DS game like the lesser experience and slap it in as an unlockable. Tweak what you have to to make it work on one screen and without a touchpad, but it's worth the effort. A part of what I feel is a complete colors experience is now missing, and in its place are a bunch of extras nobody was asking for and few would truly miss. Yes, I know, I know, this game is not a remake, it's a remaster, but it's barely one at that. This feels like a modder's first sloppy attempt at customizing a game. And it sucks that there is clearly so much here that was left unfinished. Data miners have found hints of a playable Metal Sonic, cutscene animations, and plenty of other things. And you have to wonder how much more special this project could have been if it was given the time to be finished instead of rushed onto shelves. I don't know if that's Sega management or if Blind Squirrel is actually run by Blind Squirrels, but the fact of the matter is, this release is a mess. Even the title, Ultimate, feels like it was only there to ride yet another Nintendo coattail and confuse a poor parent trying to pick up Smash Brothers Ultimate. Even the box art feels low effort. The original Wii and DS games had these beautiful foil covers, yet still allowing Sonic and the logo to vividly stand out against a beautifully detailed back 
background. Even the back of the case was set up like an old school carnival poster. It felt like an ad for an actual interstellar amusement park, and this disc was your ticket for admission. Meanwhile, Ultimate looks like the cover for a Jazzercise VHS. Look at this big box, all for a horrible little keychain. Not Yakker, not the new Jade Wisp. They instead give you leftover Sonic movie merch that doesn't even match the final design. This is based off that original demon. Seriously, the only way you could be more blatant about this being a cash grab is if they flat out said that this was really only here to bring in new fans from the movie and... <laughs> oh, that's right. That's exactly what they did. The Japanese special edition was certainly nice enough. I like the medallion in the book and the soundtrack, but that's nice just because it's kind of celebrating Sonic's legacy, not so much the game itself. Either way, none of the kitschy crap from either release really celebrates colors. And look, I know the original release of the game only came with the Sonic cap as a pre-order bonus, but let's be real, that's a pretty baller pre-order gift. But that said, Europe did get a special edition. You want to know what that included? It came with a Sonic action figure with wisps. And yes, the DS game had its own special edition with different wisp toys. <laughs> and if that's not all, the Australian release got this and a Sonic Colors branded blue classic controller. Though I do have to point out that it is a little silly that they packed in a classic controller when they didn't give you the option to do a quick step on the D-pad and I don't know, maybe they just didn't think about it back then, but why isn't that the case now? There's literally a D-pad on every modern controller. But who knows? Maybe a patch will fix it. Maybe a patch will fix this ugly Sonic baby keychain and turn it into something more relevant. I ugh. Patches will fix everything, I guess. Don't worry about it, guys. It's God. Oh, God, Twitter makes me so mad. I think I'm the game of all. Just expect better why don't you expect better? God. Despite the constant infighting in the Sonic community, or being exhaustingly defensive against the wider gaming audience, the one thing I think most fans can agree on with this franchise, regardless of how much you love it, is that it's very inconsistent. But one of the few consistencies I have seen throughout the entirety of this franchise is Sega not learning from their mistakes. Ironically, at the same time, while they are desperately trying to learn from their mistakes, I've been on this ride way too many times. They deviate away from a formula right as they're close to perfecting it, for something strange and unpolished. Unique, but then again, they don't commit enough to that to see its full potential, only to return to a safer set of mechanics, yet somehow completely botching that up. And in between all of that, taking cherished titles for another go-around and dragging them down in the mud with the jankier entries. That's not every time. I'm a fan of some of the collections and the Whitehead mobile ports. Sonic R, CD, and Fighters have made genuine quality of life improvements, brought back scrap material, brought them some really interesting customers all while retaining their flawed, goofy core gameplay experiences. That's why I respect them so much. Yes, maybe there are problems with the core mechanics of the games, but they still made them the very best they could be without taking away from their identity. But for every one of those releases, we get Sonic Adventure DX or Sonic 1 GBA. And unfortunately, Ultimate is in that latter camp. And while I understand why they would try to appeal to a Mario crowd with a Mario-inspired Sonic game, I have to wonder what was wrong with the first time they dropped Sonic on Nintendo hardware. They went for the GBA and GameCube for the very same reasons. They figured Sonic would appeal to Mario fans. But there, they did indeed make a genuine back-to-basics classic styled Sonic game. And they also ported over one of the most confidently defined 3D Sonic games with Adventure 2. And look, feel however you want about either of those games. Trust me, I've got plenty of my own opinions. But I could still point to both, different as they may be, yet so confident say, yeah, this is what I would consider a proper Sonic game. And when you consider the purpose of the original release of Colors, I can't help but also consider why this game for the 30th anniversary? This game catered to Mario fans. Is this just a somewhat sloppy port job, or are we still continuing to ride the coattails of Nintendo? Sure, this upcoming Sonic game looks like it's going to be a change of pace, but how are we not sure that Sonic Team just isn't copying a different Nintendo property that made waves years ago? After all that, you could, understandably, think that I had a pretty horrible time with Sonic Colors, but honestly, I think I had a better time than not. It can be hard to find any enjoyment when you are so fixated on your frustrations, and clearly I have more than my fair share. But the more I played of this game, 
any version of this game, the more I loved it and appreciated what this game brought to the table. Because when you fixate on the Mario-ness of everything going on, you can miss out on just how much Sonic design actually shines through. This brilliant setting that is unlike anything else I've played in any other video game. How rewarding it is to master these mechanics while you snatch up red rings. And yes, I had issues early on with random homing attacks, but they do give you a giant red reticle to pay attention to. And hell, even Ultimate's perfect homing attack makes you pay that much more attention. It's a mechanic that helps you improve your own skills. And muddled under all the sound effects and music are some of the funniest jokes I have ever heard in the Sonic franchise. I cannot recall a time I have openly laughed at any game in this franchise. But some of these PA announcements, I laughed like an idiot. These are fantastic. Yeah, seriously, Sonic Colors, the game that brought you Baldy McNo's hair, also has jokes about oxygen starvation and being baked alive in an oven. Wait. There's no line at Fake Me Crazy, the ride that simulates what it's like to be baked like a cake. The ride itself lasts an amazing 20 to 25 minutes or until golden brown. Not recommended for our guests who are sensitive to temperatures exceeding 350 degrees. Oh my god. I still stand by everything I've said up to this point, but I do understand how it can feel like a little bit of whiplash. Do I love or hate this game? Well, hopefully I've at least conveyed that the conversation is a little more nuanced than that. But for the sake of clarity, let's review. First part, we broke down all the new aspects from the boost abilities and all the color abilities and made a lot of comparisons to Mario-styled game design. Talking about how blatant Sonic Team was when appealing to the Wii crowd, in a more critical light, let's say. Yet in part two, I tried to explain why it would make sense to appeal to that crowd. Izuka himself explained as much in interviews, wanting to build off the success of the Mario and Sonic Olympic Games. And I do need to clarify, that doesn't mean I approve of this direction, I just understand why they made that decision. But I also spent a little time pointing out that there's actually a lot of Sonic's origins sprinkled throughout the game design itself. Granted, I don't think they fully cast captured what made those games so great, but at the same time, the effort is still there. And something they did manage to do, they captured that creativity, the unique sights and sounds that you could only find with Sonic the Hedgehog, bringing us a soundtrack and environments that rival, if not flat out surpass, a lot of elements from those original games. Yes, there is a lot of Mario here, and that might have helped lead us to Lost World, but people seem to forget that color first led us to generations. And you cannot tell me that game did not do its homework. And that is also including what Dimps brought to the table. It is so ridiculous just how much of the handheld legacy is flat out forgotten when it comes to this franchise, when many would argue that some of the greatest elements of Sonic the Hedgehog were found on handheld systems while the series was floundering on consoles. Whether or not you liked the DS version over the console version wasn't the point of part two. My point was that the complete ultimate Sonic Colors experience is playing both versions of the game. And that is something that Sonic Colors Ultimate is always going to lack. And yes, I know Blind Squirrel has continued to work on the game post-launch, and I do appreciate that, but we need to have a serious conversation about the state of these remasters we have been seeing this entire year, because it is getting ridiculous. I wrote this entire script before the GTA trilogy even dropped, and now that that is out, Rockstar can't even take care of those revolutionary games. I understand that there's a pandemic happening, and I understand that things have been a little bit wacky for a long time, but there comes a time where we need to stop giving them the benefit of the doubt and expect a little bit better when we pay money for these products. We need to stop saying that it's okay to release an unfinished game, especially a game that was completed over a decade ago. And I know some of you are going to come back to this and scoff and say, well, none of that matters now because they patched the game. And for those people, you're welcome because these changes don't happen without that backlash. We're not critiquing this because we hate Sonic Colors. If you've learned anything from these videos, I hope that you understand that despite my criticisms, there's a lot to respect about these games. No, Ultimate is not the most egregious release this year. And yeah, they've patched out plenty of the problems, 
A lot of the people that pick this up during a Black Friday sale or in a thrift store years down the road, they'll probably never have to deal with corrupted saves or seizure-inducing glitches. But we cannot forget that these issues happened at all. Because as dated as this particular video might sound to some of you, history keeps repeating itself within this franchise. It is Sonic's 30th anniversary. We are now 15 years from the 15th anniversary. This notorious time in the franchise's life. That is plenty of time to learn from those mistakes. And instead, I'm finding the entire AAA gaming industry following suit of Sonic 06. Sonic, you've already made these mistakes. And now, you have the opportunity to lead the rest of the gaming industry to a better path. You want people to forget 06? Then you don't drag down one of your great games like Colors into the mud and into that conversation. What this game represented back in 2010 can be represented best here with Sonic smashing through the notorious Sonic cycle. For a brief time, Sonic was back and everybody was celebrating. This game represented a step in the right direction. And when you look at what Ultimate is now, over 10 years later, the narrative has entirely changed. Take care of this legacy. Take care of this fan base. Take care of this icon. Because Sonic Colors should never be a stopgap. And even when it is, we should not have to wait months for it to reach the bare minimum we should have expected at launch. It does grow exhausting, giving the same critiques, making the same points over and over and over again. But guess what, buddy? I've been here all 30 years, and I'm not about to leave now. I said it in so many words back in my first video, but I'm gonna say it again. When someone you love f***s up, you don't ignore it. You grab them by the collar, you look them in the eye, and you say, hey, stop f***ing up, because I see your potential, Sonic. And yeah, it sucks that this is another misstep in a long road of missteps, but that doesn't mean Colors can't be re-re-released somewhere down the road. That doesn't mean Colors DS or the original Wii version aren't still great games, and that doesn't mean you can't enjoy Colors Ultimate on any level. Again, I do appreciate that Blind Squirrel is at least trying to right the ship, but learn from this, because I know you can. And when you do, then we will see your ultimate form. That is going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around for this extra long video, well, series, depending on how you're experiencing this, because I will be slapping this all together pretty soon, so this video essay can take its ultimate form. I just stopped reading the script at the end there and just went on an emotional rampage, so I hope that was conveyed well enough, because I'm not about to re-record that. Honestly, as frustrated as I get, I have always loved Sonic, and I'm always going to love Sonic. And if you want to hear me talk about the Hedgehog a little more often and a little more topical, then go check out my podcast, Sunset City, a Sonic podcast for the classic and modern age. Hosted by me, Cirrus the Skeptic, Wayne is Boss, and Channel Pup. I'm very proud of the work I do with those boys, and if you haven't partaken yet, I think you might enjoy it. And if you want to pitch in and help me out, because I'm doing this full-time now, then you can pitch in over on Patreon.com. Got those links down below. So thank you for any newcomers jumping on board. But an extra special thank you to all the people you're seeing on screen right now who are already supporting me. And honestly, thank you guys so much. And because these folks threw in a little bit extra, let me give them an extra special named thank you. And I can't believe how many <laughs> names I have to list off here. Those names including Kyle Winter, Joseph Duncan Sonic 2 Blue, John, Casey Colors, Faison Razul, Xanderoni the Painter, Trey Nobles, Hatsworth, Nick S, Tristan Trapp, Meekers, Dun Dun, Miles the Prower, Jeremy Singer, Mr. Boo J, 
Rain, Sam Webster, Dwight Graham, Fishflop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Shodin, Mr. SP, Cecil the Glade, The Dark Neon, Missing No, Stefan Plakonica, Three Monic, Graham J. Hall, Leonard X, Wayne is Boss, Jamie Chevalier, Lederick, 64 Bits, Ryan Rolfs, The Lumberjack, Miles Prower Radio Hour, Otis Small, Ya Boy, Shifting Flesh, Mute, Trash Baphomet, Autumn from Twitter.com, and Sodden Suzuki. I had to cut off the original thank yous from when I first recorded this script because we had a handful more people join in on the Patreon in that time, and honestly, it's still mind-blowing to me. I can't comprehend the generosity of you people. I, I sincerely thank you so much. And honestly, I didn't think I would have this much to talk about with Sonic Colors, so be patient with me when we get back to Sonic himself because I imagine when we get to some of the bigger three 3D games. We're gonna have a lot to pick apart, and once I get some new computer equipment, I'd really like to give this an unhealthy amount of time to pick apart and ramble about. But I've done enough rambling for a while, <laughs> so I'm gonna get going. Thank you all for watching, and reach for the stars, Sonic Warriors. Spoilers for how babies are made. Baby.